Welcome to the first ever edition of Off The Play. We're joined here by Paul Robinson from the Resi's Footballer and of course our special guest, none other than Dan Gorringe. Dan, thanks for joining us, brother. Thank you for having me, appreciate it. Now look, obviously it's a big weekend for football this week, but more importantly, you've made that transition to your post AFL career and you've turned Insta famous. How, how has life changed for Dan Gorringe? And don't be modest because we've been here for five minutes and you've mm. had seven people come up to you asking for photos. <laughs> that, so be honest now. Yeah, look, life's definitely, uh, I'm living in the fast lane now. Um, I just refuse to touch the public with bare hands, which is good. So, um, you know, I feel like I'm above everyone at the moment, which has been great for my self-esteem. But Does that to do with the height? With the height, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. No, no, look, uh, no, nah, it's a fame. Life hasn't changed at all, really. It's still pretty average. <laughs> so, but I've found a little niche there with uh, some following, which has been good. So, uh, it's all, all been pretty fun at the moment. How'd you start that? Was it just bored one day and you were just like having fun? Or Literally. That's the vibe that it, it's sort of... 100%. Got from it, it generally was that. I just was sitting on my couch and I was... You know when you just flick through Twitter and there's so many serious stories? Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. well, bugger this. So someone just shaked up a bit and I thought... Yeah. I've got some funny memories that people might like and yeah. um, people jumped on board and then started with that and then some videos and from the videos just snowballed into yeah. people jumping on board and um, it is what it is now. Yeah. How was it getting drafted to a club that... But well, I know they had like years in the VFL mm. and the Tech Cup and all that, but mm. it basically didn't exist. Like, how was it starting fresh at a club that there was nothing to really fall back on, like the culture or anything like that you were creating? It. How was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was um, looking back at it now, it's pretty difficult because we're all eighteen-year-old kids coming through, and we don't know what an AFL footy club looks like. Yeah. So um, it, at the time when I was there, we thought we were doing the right things. Yeah. Um, we thought the club was really good, but then on. When I moved to Carlton and you saw what a real established footy club is, yeah. um, it, it made you, you know, open up a bit. And, barely. And, yeah, barely. <laughs> barely. It just made you realise what a real club was. Yeah. So I think, um, not angry with how it was set up at the start, but it, it could have been a lot better for, for 18 year olds coming through for sure. In what way do you sort of mean like better? Do you mean like more oh, well, senior figures around? Yeah, but I think better senior figures. Like we had, they were good players, but at the, at the time, you know, 30 year old players going up there trying to. Um, play their best footy and, and bring younger players with them. And then, in terms of facilities, I mean, our waste room was a tin shed. Um, we didn't have any meeting rooms. Yeah. The back oval that we we're training on was just terrible quality. Boys would do their ankles flat out. So, yeah, um, yeah to, to go to another club and see what they had, yeah. it made you think, it, you know, what was going on up there at yeah. the time. Yeah. Well, it's sort of a lot of credit to Greater West Sydney, isn't mm. it? Eight years later, yeah. there going through the exact same yeah. thing that you did. Yeah. They're playing off in the grand final, four prelims, or four final series in a row, or mm. whatever it is. Mm. Like, does that sort of make you think like, fuck what could have been? Like, we, like, cause yeah. I don't think anyone can deny that there were some pretty good quality players that got drafted at Gold Coast. Like, I mean, Lynch, yeah. Prestia, yeah. Um, yourself, obviously. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> definitely. But you know what I mean? Like, there are some really good players through there that yeah. have all sort of hit their peak at other clubs. Like, does it make you think like, geez, if it, we could yeah. have had something pretty special if, oh. if things were different. 100%. I, I, I know it's silly to think about it. You, you try and, when you finish play footy, you try and leave it all back where it is and, and obviously reflect a little bit. But the list we had up there and the boys and the talent we had, we could have been um, something really special and could have been what GWS are this weekend. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, Prestia, Lynch, Harley Caddy. Bennell was up there, Caddy was yeah. there. Um, Jeez, yeah. yeah, so we had some really good young talent. But for one reason or another, we couldn't all stay up there together and um, everyone kind of yes. fractured away. and. Yeah. Now these boys are having good success at Richmond, which I'm really happy for. Them. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Dan, you almost took the mark of the century. Unfortunately, yeah. it was touched off the boot. Have a look at that. Do you ever look that back is and think that, that is so ever high? And think that could have changed the trajectory of my whole career. It could have been. And Dion Presser kicked me that ball as well. Yeah, so he, he, for him. yeah, oh, 100 percent. It cost me a car at the time, <laughs> mark of the year. But um, that, is, that is serious hops, man. Yeah. You're obviously, like, I, you're obviously more athletic than you probably give. Yeah. The impression of. That's on Brian. Like Brian likes 195 centimeters tall. Mm, yeah, You're, <laughs> it's really funny. Like that's that's yeah, that's I'm, massive. But that's when you know. I think when you come through the system and you, as an 18 year old, you picked up the AFL footy. It's all fun and it's all new, yeah. and you just play on instinct. But um, yeah, the change is pretty quick when you got to follow instructions and all yeah, that. But yeah. that that mark there was an 18 year old kid just going for the ball, and yeah, um, fortunately it was touched. So things could have been different if it wasn't. 
Dan, we were preparing for this interview, obviously, and Paul was sending me hours and hours of Don't footage of your highlight. Like, yeah. With this, like, really professional yeah, yeah. outfit. We did prepare. No, we did. Like, we did hours of interview. Hours of preparation. There'll be lots of hours there, yeah, sure. But I can't help but notice there was a goal you kicked. I think it might have been one of your first goals for Carlton, right? Yeah. You kicked it. it was a scissor kick in the air. It was beautiful. One of the goals of the year, if yeah. I might say. Yeah, oh, thanks. And uh, we had Sam Rowe in the goal square as well, and he turned his back on you, and I was expecting a flood of emotion, a flood of Carlton blokes to come around and get around you. But you got donuts. Why was was it a culture issue at Carlton? Were you, were you liked at Carlton? I was liked. I think our uh, golf scene just had seventy hit outs on me, so <laughs> <laughs> everyone was pretty flat that I couldn't get a hit out or, um, or beat I him at all. So yeah, but he can jump and kick it out. Of oh the mate, if there's anything in the air, I'll get it. But in terms of hit outs, I was no good that day. So uh, Carlton was Carlton was actually the the two year period where I drew my footy the most. Yeah, yeah, really loved it there. Hey, we were catching up for a coffee earlier, and Paul was a little bit disgusted. He got given a coffee without a lid, right? And he was saying, you I know take what? Take away coffee, man. And there's a photo. Yeah, I've got photo proof to put it up. That's not on. He Dude. was saying, look, I'm going to go and review these guys mm. on Facebook. I'm not happy. And I said, hey, look, if we're talking about people that review people, review restaurants on Facebook, our man right here, yeah. he's no stranger to that. Can you take us back to that? What was so bad about Before we was do it a that, steakhouse? No, what, what was it? It was could just I a read, cafe. Can I read it out? Yeah, read it out. Go for yep. it, as well. Bugger him. Oh, no. Not that it's. Oh, mate, it is what it is. There's food reviews going around everywhere. Exactly, yeah, oh, no. Yeah. I just happened to be on a list at the time. Yeah. Um, so it's for Niche, Espresso and Bakehouse. Where is that? Is that in Melbourne or is that Gold Coast? <laughs> it's in the Gold Coast. Gold Coast, sorry, yeah. perfect. Shout out. <coughs> yeah, shout, <laughs> shout out to them. <laughs> I'm not welcome um, out there. Shit house. Wasted one hour of my Saturday for you to lose my order. How the fuck do you lose an order? You have five tables max to keep track of. They're going to find the Malaysian aircraft before you find my order. And don't shake your head at me when I ask for my money back. <laughs> Bitch, I'm surprised you found my money, you time wasters. Is that actually right? <laughs> That's what you wrote! <laughs> That's so much worse than what I thought it was. <laughs> oh, look, like, like, yeah, looking back, it's probably not the greatest moment I've ever had, but bad. when you, you, I honestly don't remember what happened. I must have been angry. I think that's think, your order. I think, yeah, <laughs> from going what you read back then, I think they must have lost my order, definitely. Um, mate, I can't remember, honestly. I think I must have just put an order there, didn't get my food, and thought, bugger it, I'll take it on Facebook. You, well, fair enough. You crammed a fair bit of Mate, that's unbelievable in. that <laughs> I've read that. We'll have to go there for lunch one day. We'll... I'm not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go back there. I don't think they exist after that. Nah, <laughs> they could be out of business. I'm for, so, like, niche Cafe, I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, we can be friends again. I'll I'm come and enjoy it. I'll pay you money just to keep it. I don't, I don't want any trouble <laughs> it's anymore. It's chapter in the life of Dan Gold. It is, yeah. That's the old Dan. It's not me. <laughs> um, um, you crammed a fair bit of public interest or mm. controversy in your 27... 27 games, though, if I'm Yeah, yeah, 20, yeah. yes, 26. 26? I'll take you on. I think I'm, I'm taking I reckon you should have played the first Gold Coast game against Carlton. So oh, I'll Rob, yeah, thanks. I appreciate I'll that, mate. Yeah, that thanks. Game. I deserve that. Um, you crammed a lot. There was the, I guess it's famous now, the yeah. trade that never happened before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your comments after that, Jacko, have you got them there, man? Yeah. It's pretty just... hard hitting. Like, I'm not saying they're not warranted. No, no, yeah, um, exactly. But, like, geez, that's, you went whack, like, I did go whack. Um, and I'm not saying it's not No, no, no. I, I agree. Like, I imagine I think... you obviously felt lied to. No one likes being lied to. Look, there's a whole no. bunch of comments. We could probably go all day, really, with what oh, you said man. about Port Adelaide. I think it was a bit of a period then, wasn't it? I niche and then Port Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> just on there, we've got the trust with the club is broken. It is going to be very hard to rebuild that. I'm disgusted, and so mm. is my manager. Could you give us some kind of insight, I suppose, uh, what happened there? Why did it fell through? So this trade had been, uh, I think those comments were done the second time I'd try to go to Port. Uh, the first time I tried to go to Port, I met with Matty Primus mid-season when I was at the Gold Coast. Uh, he said, yeah, yeah, look, it'll all get done. Uh, we'll make it work. So that was all good. Then Matty Primus got sacked, um, and that, that was my only way to the club. So I made it pretty hard, and it didn't end up happening, and he ended up getting a job at the Gold Coast, uh, and then told the Gold Coast that I was talking to Port. So they weren't happy, and then obviously Port wasn't, weren't happy either because he looked like an idiot, you know, yeah. talking to players mid-season. So the year after that, I tried again, with uh, Kenny Hinckley and Port's list manager. And the same thing, yeah, we'll get it done, we'll get it done, we'll get it done. Fair enough, didn't get done again. Um, and the reason I was so mad, during the trade period, I was constantly, every day I would've been on the phone to him saying, look, I know you're going off the Paddy Ryder. Yeah. If you're not gonna make it work, just let me know, because I just wanna know what I'm doing next year. I said, no, 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 we'll get it done, we'll get it done. Uh, so on the last day, it's, it's, I'm just waiting by my phone, waiting for a call to come through. Guess at 2 p.m. when it shuts or whenever it was, no call. No call after that period to say, look, sorry, it didn't happen. 
rah, rah. It was just uh, my manager calls me and he goes, mate. Is that Marty Pass? Marty, Marty called me. So Marty called me and goes, mate, just found out from the Gold Coast, Port never actually put an offer forward to him for you. So I was getting just, I felt like I was just getting, you know, strung along the whole time. Yeah. So, well, whatever. Next day I get a, a call from a reporter. Uh, from Adelaide, and he says, "What are your thoughts?" And I thought he was just calling me because I know him from Adelaide. Yeah. I thought he was just calling me to actually want to know what was going on. <laughs> Next casual chat. <laughs> casual chat. Five hours later, my manager's on the phone going, "Mate, what have you said?" Oh. I said, "What do you mean?" He's like, "You've gone after Port Adelaide Heart. It's going to be the media tomorrow. There, no one's on you." Like, rah, rah, rah. I was like, "Oh no, I've messed this up massively." Yeah. So, again, obviously, some of the comments are pretty hard, but. Um, no, I don't. Like, no, I don't. I don't, I don't really regret saying him because it's, yeah. I don't think I have any regrets on what I said. I think probably voicing it to the AFL world the way I did probably shouldn't have shouldn't happen like that. So in terms of what I said, I was I still stick by it. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. But I just shouldn't have gone the way about it. Uh, but I did. Yeah. yeah. Dan, just off the cuff, you played at two AFL clubs. Uh, if you were to wake up and you found out that one of your former teammates was in trouble for going on a mass shooting, mm. who would you accuse? <laughs> Jeez, over, and I get to choose between both clubs? Yes. David Cunningham from the Blues. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's got a bit of creepy shooter vibes about him, so <laughs> I reckon oh, he's one of my favourite people in the world, Dave Cunningham, but he's got a bit of a creepy vibe about him, so he'd be the one that'd go shoot up somewhere. Fair enough. Now, you and Henry Shade signed at Baldwin, if that's correct. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, they had the biggest coaching announcement in local footy for the last 10 years. Yeah. Rocket Eads there, going to turn this club into an absolute powerhouse. Yeah. And then their two gun recruits left. Yeah. Could you give us some insight into why you left Baldwin? Yeah, no, me and Rocket obviously don't get along very well. Um, it's what been publicised. What was that? Was just, it was just, a bit old school and you yeah, were in the school? I, it yeah. wasn't so old school, it was just. Um, not Instagram guy, Rocket. No, nah, no, I just, just didn't. I just didn't feel like he could relate to the players the way that the game was turning a bit and I felt like he was a bit behind the ball and how he connects with people and uh, I just found him a bit, a bit rude and um, away from the field really nice awesome good bloke but in terms of footy and telling you certain things I just don't think he he was in touch with players Yeah. Um, so my relationship with him really turned sour because I was picked to play around 1 2016 season I think yeah 2016 against Melbourne the G Played actually decent. Uh, got dropped for round two, back for round three. Um, and then I said to him about round six or seven, I said, Rocket, look, I want to know going forward what are yeah. the plans for me in the role? Because I've played one, like round one, yeah. and then round three again. Like, is there a role for me here or not? And he goes, mate, to be honest with you, uh, we're going to get rid of you. And this is round six. Ooh. So you've got to play a whole year in the twos yeah. knowing that whatever you do, yeah. you won't come up. So I was, I was, you know, a bit sour with all that. Um, then he goes to Baldwin and he calls me and says, hey, mate, I just want to know if, if we're all good. You said no. I said, mate, obviously we're not. I hung up the phone. <laughs> hung up the phone. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that eventually we left Baldwin and, um, yeah, didn't, didn't get to rekindle my love with Rocket after that, unfortunately. So you know Rocket really well. Uh, yeah. There was that infamous video that came out from that spray that oh, he gave. Yeah. And he denied it, right? <laughs> Instead of just copying on the chin and saying, look, you caught me out here, he yeah. denied it. Is there any truth to that spray? Do you believe with your intimate knowledge that's, of Rocket that happened? That's hundred percent Rocket Egg. <laughs> and the thing you gotta do, Rocket, because I've learned this along the way. Obviously I've made a few blues with how I go about voicing my opinion. You've just gotta own what you do, I reckon, and uh, Rocket. Just cop it. Just cop, just cop it and Rocket didn't want to do that unfortunately. So um, yeah, but he'll learn. <laughs> um, you were a part of something that I can imagine you'll probably look back on, maybe even now, but mm. probably in the future as Gold Coast. Know, growers and club and whatever you're involved in their first win against Port. Yeah. How, like, how did that feel afterwards? Was it? I can't. I just can't actually imagine mm. how that would feel. Like, did it feel like yeah. a final win? Did it feel like a this is a relief? Was it excitement for oh my god, like, yeah, any more of this to come? Like, what? Do you remember much about that day? And what? Oh, no, I, I'm you're down by seven goals. Well, down by. Stage. I remember. Yeah. I think I remember a really good feeling going into the game because yep. I think Port was struggling a bit at the time and. Um, it's, it was still pretty hard to win on the road back then going yeah. to Adelaide. So I think I remember a really good feeling going into that game, especially. Uh, but then you're right, we're down by, by seven or something goals, and then to come back and win it after the game was just it was mayhem. Like yeah. a bunch of 18 year old boys who'd been you know, watching the players they were playing against yeah. on, on TV to come out there and then roll them and come from behind the way we yeah. did. Uh, it was really special for the club. and. Um, the only thing that let us down that day was that we celebrated pretty hard that weekend. And then next weekend we were all buggered. So how how hard did it go? Yeah, it went pretty hard. The first two <laughs> years of this Gold Coast party. Yeah, yeah. The first two years of, of winning games in the Gold Coast. Every weekend it was a party. Yeah. Like a full on go for it party. Um, 
So yeah, we, we learnt that you can't do that in AFL footy yeah. um, and that winning, uh, you win and then you move on to next week, not win and then party for as long as you can. So. Did it, did it, <laughs> do you think a lot of that had to do with not having, like yeah. we said before, those senior, more senior blokes around? I, guess. I mean, you still yeah. had like your Campbell Browns, yeah. and, like Gary Abbott Jr., obviously, yeah. players like that, but did, it, did you need someone that was probably in that like younger yeah. gap like, yeah. I mean when GWS got Phil Davis he'd, sort of, yeah. he'd been at a club he was still young but mm. he'd been at a club and had yeah. around not, yeah. not 18 and 30 like did you need someone that was sort yeah. of in the middle 100%, of the, 100% yeah. you need like a 22, 23 year old yeah. to come to the club and say look you will enjoy a win obviously yep. but you don't need to do this this and this um, and how to recover and, and obviously nutrition was a big one up there boys were just eating what they want so back to what you've said before there's just no structure around the footy club it was yeah. just your 18 year old kid you getting paid some decent money, yeah. go and do what you want on the Gold Coast, yeah. um, which made it hard to hard to actually be a good athlete. Thanks very much, Dan. Appreciate you taking the time to join us, and thanks for that. Thanks for watching.